is Hans from Gradle. With me here is Mark Vieira from uh, Elastic, senior software engineer. How would you describe your responsibility focused on developer productivity engineering at Elastic? Yeah, so my role is primarily to enable the Elasticsearch engineering team to be productive, both in, in sort of dealing with build and CI and uh, tooling issues, basically. So today we're going to talk a little bit about developer productivity and how that basically impacts team, basically the cost of not being proactive in this regard. So what it means to really tackle developer productivity in a, in a really active fashion. And so as part of that, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means and what are the things that encompass developer productivity and, and how uh, we can solve some of these challenges for, for our team. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about what you know, what the potential costs of not taking this seriously are. You know, what, what are the negative impacts to engineering teams if you don't really focus on developer productivity engineering as a sort of first class problem within development teams. Since, since when would you say is that a practice, a focused effort at, at your team? I would say at least the last couple of years, um, there's been at least for the last two years, there's been sort of dedicated engineering resources at that in the sense that there's been, you know, a person or people that that's been their main, their main focus. Many teams have that as it's a sort of informal role. It's maybe something that someone on the engineering team does, mm -hmm. but it's not their primary focus, right? It's something that they do. So, so for at least the last two years at, on the Elasticsearch engineering team, we've, we've dedicated sort of members of the team towards that, that effort. So it's kind of interesting when you when you when you look back at uh, how that role basically has evolved from uh, people working on build and test automation being let's say 10, 15 years ago second class engineers, the people not good enough right to, right. to write the application code, uh, uh, and and with titles like release engineer, build engineer, and the titles are still kind of pretty dominant in the industry, to now. Uh, this evolution, right, of, of saying this is now developer productivity engineer or engineering efficiency team. or um, But in your case, uh, it's interesting with Elastic, you don't even have titles around that. What, what, is the, what is the thinking behind that? Essentially, people that hold this role are just software engineers. I mean, and, from, and even from a sort of recruiting and hiring perspective, the threshold for that is, is really the same. Like we, we, We're looking for folks that would just as well be successful as developers on, on the team, but really that have both, you know, potentially a, you know, a, a certain skill set that falls more in that regard, but almost even more importantly, um, a desire to do that yes. work, right? Yeah. We want folks that are motivated to do that kind of job, which is sometimes, you know, the hardest part. You know, some folks are, are potentially well suited to do that kind of work, but, you know, want to focus more on the product stuff than, than the developer tooling stuff. So. Um, just finding finding individuals that are motivated to do that and that find a lot of you know satisfaction in making the rest of the team productive and, and enable them to do their job and then and then set them up to do that. And uh, during this this webinar, I will have uh, I think follow up questions on how you separate the work because it's not completely like consumer and provider, right? The developers have to be involved in some capacity, and I'm, I'm super curious how how you organize that. Right, that collaboration with the experts, the people who are primarily focused on that, but then not just treating developers as passive consumers on, on that subject, but as active participants. I'm, I'm very curious about that. Okay, tell us a little bit more about uh, uh, your team and at what scale you're, 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 you're writing software. Yeah, so, so Elastic's been around for a while. Obviously, folks are, are, many folks are familiar with the, the sort of core product of uh, of the company, which is Elasticsearch, um, as well as the, the Elk stack, which is Elasticsearch and Logstash and Kibana. Some people might be surprised to, to realize that the Elastic as a company is, is over a thousand people now. We're probably approaching 2,000 at this point, and, wow. uh, and we're completely distributed. So, so there's, we've got folks in 40-some countries, you know, speaking as many languages, and, and so um, it's, it's both really exciting and there's obviously the challenges of being a distributed company. I'll, I'll come with it at that, that scale. So my, my role is primarily, primarily is to support the, uh, the engineering team for the Elasticsearch project, which is about 60 uh, full-time developers in terms of the build. So you know, if you were to run the entire integration test suite just in one shot on your laptop or something, it would probably take you know, somewhere between one to two hours, you know, depending on, on the nature of the machine. So it's, it's, it's pretty significant um, 
chunk of, of, of <laughs> build resources there. Uh, and the project is, is, is primarily Java. And in, and in terms of how we support the team, um, yeah, we have the dedicated team in, in place. So, so we have, um, but, they, but basically the folks that, that focus on developer productivity are sort of, organizationally speaking, part of the Elasticsearch engineering team, right? So there is, um, there is a central um, infrastructure team that's a, a broad, the, the company that provides sort of generic infrastructure for all the teams, you know, things like Jenkins and Kubernetes clusters and Artifactory, that kind of stuff, that sort of general infrastructure that, that most every product's gonna consume in some way. Um, but then most every team has folks that are very specifically tailored to sort of meet the needs of the technology stacks and stuff like that, of that, of that team. This is a great setup, right? Because we, we see quite a few organizations who don't have such dedicated teams and then they only have the application teams and the CI teams. And the CI teams are not incentivized by making developers more productive. They're just, hey, we need to provide whatever CI product we are using in, in a reliable way. So they're focused. They don't even, and they don't have any connection to the pain the developers are actually having. So I think having that clear separation, developer productivity and, and, and dev infrastructure yeah. and uh, makes a lot of sense. They're just not well positioned to do that either because they're not really embedded in the, in, in the development team. And it's probably also not the skill set. Yeah, and they're, well, they're having to, you know, at, at Elastic, we have, we have Elasticsearch, which is Java, and then we have Lockstash, which is, you know, Ruby, and then we have, you know, other stuff, which is Beats, and we have machine learning stuff, which is in C++, right? So having an infrastructure team that's having to support this, this huge polyglot ecosystem is going to be really, really hard for them yeah, to do. And from a, uh, uh, from a DevProt team or developer productivity team, are you, are you looking with your team that you cover all your time zones? Is that, is that an important thing so that you always have someone who can do, uh, uh, let's say, you know, last line of defense troubleshooting help? Yeah, historically we've had um, basically someone kind of in the European time zone and someone in, in North America. Partly that just it conveniently worked out that way. But it's definitely a conscious you know, decision as, as we sort of grow the team to kind of have, to some degree, some, some level of, of overlap and, and someone basically around during those hours if, if CI does explode for some reason, you, know, you don't have to wait 12 hours for the, for the person in North America to wake, to wake up. So it, it helps. Um, ideally, we're not so put in the position where if something sort of catastrophic was to happen and everything would sort of grind to a halt. Um, but it, it does help to have folks available if, if folks have questions or if there's some kind of outage.